The Darkness 2 centers around a young mob boss by the name of Jackie. After dealing with being orphaned, brought up to be a killer, and also being essentially possessed by an ancient entity that exists as a manifestation of the concept of all things dark and evil, the only person he ever romantically loved was killed for her relations with him, so the guy's life is going swell. After suppressing it for years, life takes a bit of a turn, as things tend to do in these situations. With a life dominated by violence and murder, he's sworn off of using the abilities granted to him by the darkness. I'm out trying to have a nice meal, and the whole place gets attacked by a bunch of knuckleheads who think they can go shooting up any place they like. Vinny, taking care of me like he always does, begins dragging me to safety. The guy tries to give me a gun, though. Come on, man, you know I'm trying to get away from the violence. I serve as his mute shield for a bit before getting dragged elsewhere. Now, the game still hasn't actually given me control of anything outside of shooting these guys, but after this, no more doing the shooty shooty bang bang. Gonna help Jackie go down the right path in his life. Leave this whole killing business behind him. Also, if you don't kill these guys, you just die on the loop. There's no way out of this that I'm aware of. At least this guy's waving us on. Thanks for the encouragement, man. Can always use the support. Vinny gets us out of the frying pan and into the fire. More literally into the fire than I personally would have liked. Gas lakes are fucking dangerous. In honor of the spooky season, surrounded by fire and death, Jackie lets the darkness loose. It puts him back together and gets to work. Now I'm the monster. Vinny survived? How the hell? Anyways, as I make my way out of this shit show, let's address how things are gonna go down. From this point on, I ain't using guns to hurt anybody. The light may be my enemy, but I ain't taking any pot shots at a light what ain't done nothing to me. I let this monster out of me so it could start pulling its own weight. Long as I'm stuck lugging it around, it can handle business. Simple run for a simple kind of person. On the left side is old Grabby. Good for using parts of the environment and throwing things around. On the right is Sir Slaps. Slappy old boy is going to be doing most of the talking for us when we have some disagreements to settle. Holy shit! I don't think I can show that. He's, uh... He's not gonna make it. This game is really fucking violent. Who made this? Digital Extremes? Yes, that Digital Extremes. Turns out they released this a year before Warframe. Huh. While I am currently carrying a gun, it's more of an ornamental piece. Because this game's aiming is weird and trying to not pick up guns is genuinely harder than pretty much anything else. Are you okay, buddy? I don't think he's okay. We should probably get him to a hospital. I'm not even done tutorializing and there's another explosion? Oh, hi. This Darkling is going to be one of my most faithful companions for this journey, and he's certainly a thing. He can be seen farting and pissing throughout the game because... comedy. I make it to the point that I can start buying upgrades, and the first one is, of course, the ability to feed the very hungry darkness. Nom nom nom. I'll primarily be feeding my friend a supply of human hearts. Because who can say no to that face? Just look at him! Oh, look at him! There you go, little buddy. Gonna help you grow big and strong. Hiss! Snarl! Noises of discontent! Unsurprisingly, the greatest enemy of the dark is light. There isn't much to speak of at the moment, but as the game goes on, there will be more and more sources of light. Anytime I'm standing in it, the screen goes nuts, and I can't use any of my abilities until a bit after I get out of it. You can hit lights to break them and even throw things, but aiming through an object is... less than reliable. Also, keep in mind that apparently fire doesn't count as light but sunlight does? Also, this ancient evil is stopped by a flashlight. What are the rules here, and why do they suck? Most folks have it as a basic feature of their smartphone. Ah! I told you, Jerry, you can't just sneak up on me like that. See how hungry this poor guy is? I picked up the swarm ability. It does that. What that is, it's... Hard to tell at the moment. Mostly a stun, I guess. It'll become a lot more useful later on, but the cooldown is dreadful. Guys, maybe you shouldn't stand on- Never mind. I see a vision of my dead girlfriend before being hit by a- Mental health institution? Okay. I see a guy that I haven't seen since the previous game. He tells me to come find him. And I'm in an alley doing some more murder. At least my crime family's here to pick me up. Thanks, guys, because I need a fucking shower and a half. Do you know how hard it is to get viscera out of your hair? Holy shit, it's a working mirror in a video game! Jackie is visibly still haunted by the memory of Jenny. His aunt Sarah shows up to shame him for handling grief in his own way. Healing takes time, and wounds don't always close. I know she means well, but seriously, fuck off! My boys gotta lead on a guy that they think is related to this whole shit show, so I'm off on the hunt again. I'm gonna digest you! Also, I can throw my companion now. Has limited use, but use nonetheless. Man, that guy's got moves. Nothing quite like ragdoll physics, I suppose. Hey. Hey, dude. Boo! What the fuck was that? Like, I know that was supposed to be fear, but... What the fuck was that? Whoa, spoilers, dude. I haven't got to play it yet. Who's the real monster here? Just pick up this... Yeah, that's definitely what I was aiming for. 
Really? Okay. I get the first real boss fight. It's... a crane? I hooked a few pipes at it, which didn't seem particularly impactful. Luckily, my Darkwing seems to have an endless supply of compressed gas tanks, which can be hooked at it. Swifty's men show up from time to time for me to take a snack break on, though it's not like I was ever hurting for health here. Later on, there's a beam of light that sweeps across the arena from time to time, but this was... extremely easy. After the fact, I found my way into a diner to see a pretty obvious hallucination. He's, uh... Were you he's... struggling. Intoxicated by the illusion, he absolutely doesn't care if what he's seeing is real. Better to have something fake than nothing at all, as far as he can tell, I suppose. A depressing state, and a young man that absolutely could use a therapist and some actual support in his life. I get that they're wanting to introduce a mechanic here where I can't always destroy lights. I gotta track down the generator, but you're telling me that I'm able to rip car doors off of their hinges as well as metal doors from their frames, but breaking this random spotlight is impossible? Where's the consistency? I got my hands on an upgrade that got on my hands. As long as I'm standing outside of weirdly specific lights, I'll have what the game calls dark armor. Basically, my health will stretch a bit further, but I'm not sure how much further the edge will. Seriously, how does this game just keep getting edgier? You sure you don't want, like, some salt or ketchup or something to go with these? I can't imagine they're pleasant raw. You do you, I suppose, but I prefer at least some spices with my food. Maybe some sauce. You can hit a button to have a line of darkness trail out toward your destination in case you get lost. Handy to have. That'll be important to remember later. Swifty tries to plead for his life. Give me anything and everything I want to know as I rip and tear through his men. The darkness doesn't seem to want to hear it, though. Once I catch up to him, he's more than willing to spill his guts, but then the darkness does it for him, despite my protests. But not before getting a lead, at least. Jackie describes watching his own life like a movie that he can't control. The experience is a horror film, and he's the monster. Thus, this totally qualifies as a horror game for the purposes of the spooky season. Like many toxic family members, my aunt offers to buy my love with gifts despite being an ass. Better at least be some fucking good meatloaf. I meet up with a guy named Johnny, who's an expert on the darkness. He's, uh, being forced to help figure some things out. He pretty quickly puts together that shit's looking bad for me, but doesn't seem totally sure. Things should be fine. I can make all your dreams come true. You say that like they're not mostly nightmares. I think I'll pass. Basically, some really creepy bastards took over a building full of some very unfortunate women. I have absolutely nothing against adult entertainers, but these poor souls are suffering in this hellscape, and I'm going to make sure they're not the only ones. I'm given a gun by a nice lady, but she must not have paid attention to the rules, because that's not how we're rolling today. I slaughter my way through some abusive pieces of shit and take a trip through the Darkwing's eyes for a hot minute. Find familiar is a hell of a spell, huh? Things seem off, and the darkness does not want to be here. The place looks... culty. I'm caught in a room full of light and angry men. Definitely a cult. I've literally been crucified. This is 100% a cult. The leader looks a bit beat up, but seems vaguely reasonable. I want the darkness. Never mind. He wants to use the artifact in front of me to remove the darkness from me. He seems to think that he can control it. It can only be removed of my own free will somehow, or with the ancient artifact that they have right here. Not very chaotic for the embodiment of chaos, but he plans on torturing me to make me give it up. He even kills some of my men in my own house. After ordering all of my family to be killed and literally crucifying me, they plan on breaking my will with pathetic slow punches. Oh no, stop. On an emotional journey where Jackie gets really pissed off at the entity inhabiting his body, he's told that the darkness has Jenny's soul. I guess the real darkness is the friends we made along the way. One of those do as I say or never see her again while she's tortured in hell for all of eternity kind of deals. After ripping a stake through my hand and killing a guy, I'm forced to pull a trigger not once, but twice. If you don't shoot the guy, you get put back to break free again. Then you can't physically move or do anything other than shoot, so gotta take the light out. With me drastically weakened, they decide to torch the building and leave. Now, having a trap room full of lights is a good idea, but why were they holding me in a room with only one hanging, unprotected light? Why was Jackie not bound or whatnot? They know that most wounds won't kill him. He can heal from basically anything, but he still had working fingers and feet. I feel like their lack of commitment to being inhumane hurt their chances here a lot. Like, their own men are still in the building they set fire to. Why are they so willing to protect me, but not them? They fully plan on killing me, and they know the darkness won't let me die as long as I have it, so what's up? Did they too think that the fire would suppress the darkness? Because in all fairness, I would think that too, but the game devs disagreed. My Darkwing glitched most of my ammo through the map with his little maneuver, so now he's my ammo. Hold still, you little shit. After which, I made an invisible man go splat. Really showing off how polished this game is here. Finally getting off the rooftops and being taxied home at high speeds. Enemies are going to start carrying lights from here on out. That guy over there? I can't really reach him, but my swarm can. And so can this car door. Easy as wanton murder with the power of an eldritch being. What the fuck is going on here? Wait, he's alive? Uh, well, he's not anymore. I'm hit by a car, and the right side light goes out before it even touches me. The second one stays, though. The game wants me to shoot it out, but you can just wait until Jackie remembers that he has the legs. Combat encounters started taking a lot longer because he just wouldn't... Come on, throw it. 
There we go. Really? What is your aim, Jackie? Uh, apparently the original Keepers of the Darkness are the guys after me right now. I'm not 100% sure on how this game decides the number of targets to hit with Swarm, but it seems to choose them almost at random, and maybe sometimes just misses? It's fully upgraded though, so this is as good as it will ever be. Whoa, 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 slow down there. Don't want to come off of cooldown too quickly. In the end, sometimes lucky swings while standing in direct light were more viable. It sort of abused the moment of grace period between light and dark. Doesn't seem intentional since my health was red. It probably just couldn't cancel the melee animation once it started. Oh well, it works for me either way. As I needed it to do many times throughout the run. Riot shield dudes show up with enhanced... whatever that is. A few slaps and I can throw their own shields at them. No big deal. Jeez! You guys keep trying to jump scare me! When are you gonna learn? It's bad for your health! After doing the whole one-man army thing, Jackie comes up short and he watches his aunt be killed before he gets a shotgun to the face. Back in the institution, they're telling me that the darkness isn't real. It might help if my name and face weren't on the comics you guys were giving me about the darkness. Also, my reflection is totally different. That's a nice touch. On my way to my destination... Yeah, I think my immersion is broken. You're telling me I'm crazy, but I also still have navigational superpowers. No fucking way you're a doctor. If you know it's an illusion, you could make it go away. Yeah, that's... Not how delusions work. I, I agree. Definitely not a doc. Now I'm the doctor. I'm then taken to see Nurse Jenny. You know, my dead girlfriend. Let's say this is all real. Bringing him to work with her directly? Can you imagine how much distress that would cause a patient? Holy shit, what kind of place would intentionally inflict that on the poor guy? He should be kept far from her for his safety and hers. Things go south and Johnny helps me make a break for it, and by that I mean the game breaks. I can see through my own shoulder! You can't catch me a second time, disembodied hand! Apparently the shotgun put me out for four days while the darkness pieced me back together. My guys drove them all off only after everything went to shit. Better late than never, but come on guys, what the fuck? Apparently the darkness wants the artifact for itself to make itself more powerful. Somehow. And Jackie isn't particularly smart or swimming in options, so I gotta play ball with it for now. I'm back in the institution being wheeled somewhere, and back to my aunt's funeral. Odd transition. Does this mean that I'm not even getting that meatloaf? The funeral is then attacked by the guy that killed her in the first place. At least he saved me the trouble of tracking him down. Despite coming here to, I guess, kill me, he makes me chase him all around the cemetery. He's relatively easy to hit with thrown items, and is also vulnerable to swarm, so no distance shall save him. Fucking really? Are you kidding me? Son of a bitch! Also, the game introduced enemies that can nick my gun. Oh no, whatever why? He decides that getting close to shoot me is a good idea for... Some reason? The only real complication with this fight is the headlights on that vehicle that pulls up. I struggled for a while trying to hit it, but I ran out of things to throw. Then he decided to get within melee range again. Thanks, bud. Couldn't have done it without you. He gives me the location of his boss, and I give him some payback. This is for that meatloaf! You ruined my dinner! Fuck, I'm hungry. Johnny explains to me the concept of the Angelus, a being that's essentially the opposite of the darkness, my natural enemy. He also explains that the siphon is the one thing that could kill me. I'm sure neither of those things will be important. Jackie tells his crime family to lay low. He's gonna handle this whole shit show on his own. It took until literally right here for me to realize that you can crouch in this game. Would have been nice to know sooner to know how to take cover better, but here we are. I'm forced into an arcade shooter thing, but I didn't technically have the darkness in this memory. I'm also forced to do this. So shoot objects I must. Which also aren't enemies, so justifying my mandatory gun use here. Also, some enemies now contain small black holes instead of hearts, which I can throw to kill other enemies. The implications of these abilities are absolutely horrifying to consider. I can't break weak-ass lights that you can buy down at the hardware store, but I can throw a fucking black hole? Do you know how literally massive those- I of course have to go through another shooting gallery, same as before, really. Remember that secret I was gonna tell you? I love you, Jackie Estacado. Well, fuck. That's just sad. I do a whole fucking lot of busy work for my Darkling to crash a gas truck through a gate for me. Good work, little buddy! Continuing the theme, I'm pulled into a haunted house ride with Jenny. See? Horror game. Totally counts. You're supposed to use a gun in this section to defend yourself from dudes that are sort of seeping through the delusions. I don't really know how the hell the rules work here, to be honest. Are these real? Are the rides real? Are they seeing me just kind of slow walk through this portion? Like, what's, what's happening right now? No matter how smoothly that man slides, I won't shoot him. I will use the swarm to stun the next one, though. Yeah, I still have that at the moment. I have to tank my way through some of it, but this section is so slow that I have my swarm back for the next time I needed it. Easy section, but spooky section. Like an idiot, I open an Iron Maiden, looking for Jenny, I guess? Before being thrown into it. I understand that this is supposed to be dramatic and painful, but... How the hell is this thing containing the darkness? Sure, I could be held easily, but I thought only the siphon and some lights could stop the thing. So why this? I just... Are you making up the rules as you go? Inventing new things that can stop me at every turn? Looks like a frickin' Iron Maiden in there. Little on the nose, don't you think? 
It's just a tool closet. Why are the plungers bloody? You know what? Never mind. And even after trying to grab her and run last time, I'm allowed to see her. Sort of. They really made no precautions here. I'm then shoved and insulted before the guy flips me off. Perfectly reasonable behavior from staff. I do the only reasonable thing and set off to find a weapon to handle that guy. I will not allow abuse of the mentally ill on my watch. Prepare to be shanked. While searching, I find a guy that suspiciously walks like and sounds like the Darkling. Also calls me a name that only the Darkling does. Also, it's the Darkling. He explains that the darkness can't hear us at the moment. He fills me in on the whole, the asylum was made up to confuse me to keep me alive while putting me together for further use as a host thing. Furthermore, keep me away from Jenny, who is, you know, in hell. He also explains that he's effectively immortal anywhere except, I guess, the asylum. Not sure how or why, but... They successfully steal my patron from me, and... Burn him so the darkness cannot return to its host. Make it hurt. Make it last. Wouldn't it be better to burn Jackie quickly? Make sure he can't recover or escape by some plot convenience? Yeah, no, 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 no. I have put up with a lot of bullshit. I, I say no to this. Jackie, a mortal man standing in an Iron Maiden that is currently glowing hot, dropped what I'd estimate is at least 10 feet into a fire, is perfectly fine? Let's ignore how the ever-loving fuck the Iron Maiden is that hot, despite the fact that that guy is currently standing significantly closer to it without any sign of, you know, combustion. Going by the color, that Iron Maiden is likely around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 1000 Celsius. I call bullshit. That man is dead. He has so many levels of fucking dead. Also, now that it's in the fire, it's significantly cooler than it was. What the hell? What is this complete disregard for continuity? Turns out, I'm in my old home, so I pick up my dad's gun because I have to. Now, I don't have the darkness, but I also don't technically need to fight these guys, so I book it. This guy has given some of the darkness to use against me, and I don't have a choice here. I'm on my own. As much as it sucks, there's no other way out of this. It's not my warlock powers, but melee is at least mapped to the same button with or without the tentacles. So to at least do my best to maintain the spirit of things, I smacked the bitch until he went down. And I gained back a fraction of my power. And by a fraction, I mean I literally can't tell the difference between this and full power, but the story says that I'm weaker right now. Turns out, these guys were promised the ancient entity by my father if they could find the siphon to cure me of the darkness. Save my life from becoming... what it is. And their method of asking for me to give it to them is... Stronger than his father. Keep pushing him. Yeah. You couldn't have just asked? Really, Jackie has terrible control of things. It would probably be reasonable to hand it over to- This world will burn and kneel before its true god! No, 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 no. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? I can't trust you with shit! Jackie's basically just running a crime family, but you guys? Now I can't let you keep it. Why do you keep making things worse for yourself? Can I even call this a boss fight? He doesn't really do anything to avoid being slapped, then he throws free hearts at me. Sure, they're walking and talking before I pop them out of their weird fleshy wrappers, but I'll take snacks however they come my way. Ancient Evil has a hell of a strong digestive system. Give me the darkness. You're literally holding it! You ripped it out of me, you dumb fuck! Now, I could be wrong, but it seems like he's resurrecting these guys. He also says, Your death awaits you again. And, None who serve the Brotherhood shall ever die. If he really is bringing them back to life, I 100% believe that he would have just traded Jenny being alive and well. If he really can control the darkness, like, What's the problem? This entire plot could have been resolved by a please and thank you before it even started. What a weak fucking villain. Ah, I found his problem. His code is going through his brain. No wonder he can't think clearly. Oh, well. He, uh, he ain't gonna be thinking at all, it looks like. So Jackie kills himself here to go to hell to help her without a real plan. Stabbing the other guy gave him some of my powers. Stabbing me is death, though? I don't understand. He's instead sent to the mental health institution. He starts saying some really concerning shit, and despite every incident before, the doctors think it's a good idea to bring me to Jenny to calm him down? The darkness created this whole illusion, I gotta say, come on, you're not making any sense here. I know Jackie's not very smart, but damn. The darkling comes in to get me a way out, and, well, bye old friend. You were a minor help to this run. Jenny tries to get Jackie to step away from the ledge. He knows it's not real, and it's all a trick to placate him. Live a life where he can stay with Jenny. Really? The only thing he wants. Let him live a lie forevermore. Maybe in another life. No! The darkness is in hell too. Unsurprising. It doesn't really do much to stop me though. Everything here is more or less reskins of the mortal plane. It's a whole mess of combat and I still have all of my abilities. So the darkness being pissed at me being here doesn't really do anything. It keeps telling me not to, but like... For 
a horror creature, you sure aren't putting in much effort here. Realistically, if it can create one illusion, why not more? What if it went several layers deep? What if this too was an illusion? The real world was an illusion. Everything. I'm forever a puppet and all my struggles are essentially a simulation within a simulation within a so on and so forth until the end of time. If it's so powerful, why is it so bad at everything except eating hearts? There are a couple of notable differences here that I noticed. Part of the path that I have to travel to get where I'm going just didn't work. It wouldn't open and I had to reset to continue. I also knocked an enemy through the map here. Just had to get in a couple more bugs before the end, huh? It's really adamant that I not save her, but I slap my way through all who would, you know, actually show up to stop me. But I break her fear of her bindings. He's able to embrace her for the first time in years. They get to share a tender moment before the credits roll. Afterwards, you let her go for her to be revealed as the host of the New Angelus. She's essentially your mortal enemy. She loves you, but understands that the darkness needs to stay in hell. So she nopes out and leaves you here to suffer for eternity. But like, why? On so many levels, why? She cites the destruction you caused. She watched it all unfold, but the siphon is within reach. The darkness has no host. No willing one, at least. You can literally just take it out of him. He doesn't want it, he fucking hates it. He just wants to be with her, so why does she act like they're in cahoots? And okay, say they are. The darkness can seemingly go to and from hell at will. Even seal its mortal nemesis here, somehow, while also being in Jackie. So why can't he just leave? Sure, he's not a good person. Sure, he's hurt a lot of people, but Jenny also had a hand in a lot of misdeeds, yeah? At least guilty by association, and she's apparently worth redemption. If she's so good, why not save him from himself? I get that they're trying to set up a sequel that never happened, but... Do yourself. You couldn't have clarified what you fucking meant? Why can't the villains in this game just fucking communicate? I just... I don't like the ending. Feels... unsatisfying... forced. I'll grant you that it's emotional if that emotion is pissed off. But that's it. The comics are a thing. I haven't honestly read them, but it looks like the only way you're gonna get to see any darkness-related plot continue. I don't think this game is even close to the canon, but I digress. Allowing for literally mandatory use of guns and melee when I didn't have it, you can beat darkness too with only the darkness. At least, sort of. Fuck, I'm more just upset about this shitty cliffhanger. It wasn't bad per se, but what a weird little game to come out of digital extremes. Anyways, I hope you got something out of whatever this was. I hope you enjoyed your time here. You probably know how to use social media, and I hope that means I'll get to hear your thoughts now and on any future addings. Till then, remember to stay safe, spread some kindness in the world. Whether it be tomorrow or a year from now, have a very happy Halloween, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.